Welcome to Montana Natural History Science Shorts. Today we're going to hear from Allison and Stephanie about interesting things you can observe outside in winter. We're at the Fort Missoula Native Plant Garden looking for some fruits. Just because it's cold and there's snow and it's, it looks a lot browner than normal doesn't mean there's not still great things for us to notice outside. So let's take a look. This is the fruit that a rose plant makes. Yeah, you can see here a lot of rose hips have these little leaf sort of looking things coming off of them and that mm -hmm. actually was the sepal of the rose blossom which is pretty neat. Yeah. You were sharing earlier that you can make tea. Yeah. And yep, you, you can make tea and rose hip jams and jellies so that they're absolutely edible. You probably don't want to just sit here and eat them now because they don't actually taste that good but you add some sugar to this and yeah, there you go. There you go. <laughs> and these are snowberries. Um, not edible. Don't eat these. <laughs> and I actually just learned that snowberries have a really high level of saponins, which is the stuff in soap. Mm -hmm. So if you squish them between your hands, it sort of feels soapy. That may be one of the reasons they give you a bellyache if you eat them. Don't eat yeah. them. Yeah, don't. <laughs> <laughs> Another name for them is corpse berries, so don't eat them. <laughs> but birds will eat them and bears sometimes mm -hmm. will eat them and yep, they will spread the seeds of the snowberry plant just like rose hips would. Yeah. A different kind of fruit. Um, you see this and you probably don't think fruit right away because it doesn't look like a berry or a rose hip or something like that. But um, these spread in a different way. They spread by wind. These are the fruits of an aster, a kind of compound flower. There's many, many different kinds of asters on the planet. And these are goldenrod. These plants had beautiful yellow flowers on them earlier in the year. And now as those flowers have been pollinated and have died off, they've developed into these wind spread seeds. There's tiny little seed and then it has all these little tiny hairs on it, basically little filaments that um, allow it to float on the wind. They're like smaller than an eyelash. So here we're looking at a bush that um, a lot of people might see it and say, oh, look at all those berries on this tree. They are not berries, technically, because they're not technically fruit. Since junipers, like other um, evergreens, are gymnosperms, mm -hmm. they do not have flowers. They have cones, or in this case, these sort of berry-like objects. Yeah. Um, but because they didn't come from a flower, they're technically not a berry. But they are still used by the plant in similar ways animals eat them and mm -hmm. yep. um, they have the same function yeah. and a similar structure. Yep. This is a mullein plant. It is a weed. It is not quite a noxious weed but um, it is not native here. It's got these long stalks where its flowers were and now there are seeds and fruit there. We're trying to sort of figure out what's going on and how it spreads its seeds. We don't think it's by wind because it doesn't have any of those nice um, little hairs. They don't really look that delicious. I can't really see a bird <laughs> wanting to eat these berries. They're really, Ooh. really tiny, really tiny seeds. Yeah. And so what we're noticing is that kind of looks like they've sort of exploded open. Um, and then once they do that, the seeds all are gonna fall on the ground and yeah, and spread. So our hypothesis mm -hmm. is that this is a plant that spreads its seeds by exploding Explosion. them out. Yeah, pretty cool. Okay. Some other plants do that too, like columbine and peas. Mm -hmm. um, so it's one of the methods that plants will use to spread their seeds. Behind us, are some very large flowering plants that have some very small fruits on them. Cottonwood trees, and cottonwood trees are one of the trees you probably know really well if you're down by the river, and they have little white fluffy fruits that will fly through the air certain times of the year. It looks kind of like it's snowing in yeah. the fall way before we actually get any snow, so. So cottonwood trees use wind to disperse their seeds, mm -hmm. but they also use water to disperse their seeds because those seeds fall into the rivers and streams. In the case of cottonwood trees, that is very important because those seeds get washed up during floods and high water yep. and deposited onto fertile riverbeds and where the trees will then grow. So even though it is chilly outside and there's snow, it's exciting to know that even in the winter, um, there are animals looking for food and, and finding it because it's there for them. 